time. All right, guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be fixing the window regulator on the CLK. So my CLK is a 2005 CLK 320. It's a coupe, not a convertible. Uh, I did try to see if there was videos on, on uh, YouTube about how to change the window regulator. Uh, but the one video I found is uh, based off of a convertible and they're working off of a parts car. Stuff is already taken apart. It really didn't help me much. So in this video, I'm just going to go step by step. So if you ever have to do it, you can figure it out on your own. Um, this is a lot of work. Let me, let me put it to you this way. I went to my mechanic. I told him about the issue. And he told me that this will actually make you have a total loss on your insurance on the car. That's how many hours of labor it is. So um, I think it's like five grand in labor. Uh, now the part, because I'm not, the the window regulator works with a small pl molded plastic piece and some cables. The repair kit for this costs 17 bucks. I got mine on eBay. Because uh, what happens is this plastic piece that holds the, the cables in place just breaks over time. Uh, I know my motor is okay because I can hear it turning. So I know there's nothing wrong with the window regulator motor. Um, but again, it's a lot of work. This will actually save you from having to spend half of the car's value in the repair. Uh, so hope you guys enjoy. If this video turns out to be too long, I might do it into two parts. But I'm going to try to condense it all into one part. Uh, so that it will live in one place if you guys ever have to do this repair. So uh, sit back, relax, and uh, let me do all the work and hope this video helps you guys out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is pop off these plastic covers to gain access to the screws that are in here. And you could just use a plastic uh, pry tool to get that done. These come off like that, just be gentle. Okay, now we could uh, back out these four bolts so that we could remove the uh, bench seat. Alright guys, so um, I removed the bolts, so apparently, I, this is a feature I had no idea of. There's a, a lever here that when you pull, it allows you to tilt these seats forward, okay, like this. Now I have the front bolts removed. Uh, but I guess this is so that when these back seats fold down, you have a 100% a, a complete flat uh, area. Um, so basically, you could see this plastic pin here, and it enters here, this hole. And you see there's a wire there. And to move that wire out of the way, you pull that lever, and it moves the wire out of the way. So that's actually a feature I had no idea of. So anyway, uh, it looks like to have access to remove this panel... I, I can't just tilt these forward. I'm going to have to um, remove the back here, the back of the seat. And the way to do that, I think I need to remove this this uh, cover here. And to do that, I think these are bolted, screwed on. I'm going to have to remove these. And then I think I could remove these after that. And after I remove that, there's some bolts under there that I think will remove the seat back. So let's go on to that next step. Now that we removed that uh, soft cover, we have access to these bolts. We're going to remove these so I could uh, unlatch the straps and we could take these seats out of the interior and we have more room to work with. Okay, so we got the bottoms of the seats out and we have to remove this pad that goes on the bottom across the bottom here and it looks like these uh, basically there's like a little metal a plastic clip that holds this metal loop and you just have to uh, pop that out so like like in this case it just pops out it's held on with like a plastic uh, uh, bolt almost so I'm gonna remove that and get access 
So it pops out like this. I'll show you. So it basically just pops out. You pull it forward, and that's all it does. It's just a plastic clip. Now we should be able to just get this out and get access to the bolts that hold the seat backs. Right, so I just want to show you in the middle here, there's a uh, this metal loop that is tucked under inside this uh, latch here. And basically, you got to push the loop in and then over, up and over to get the whole thing out. Uh, and like I said, the, the sides are just this uh, plastic stud that just clips onto this C-clip here. So uh, you can see now that we removed that, there are bolts that hold the seat backs. And there's one on the side here as well. That looks like it's a Torx, so um, we'll just uh, remove those. Looks like same thing on the other side. There's the Torx. There's uh, another 13 millimeter bolt. By the way, so far, all of these have been 13 millimeter uh, socket that I've used to remove all of these nuts. Um, I'm gonna try to not touch the seat belts. I don't think I need to. Um, once I get into the panel here, and there's gonna be an airbag in here. I'm gonna disconnect the battery to make sure that I don't uh, have uh, an impromptu uh, run in with a exploding airbag. All right guys, so I, I removed those two bolts and what those two bolts do is they just remove this anchor for uh, child, safe, uh, child seats. So it's uh, actually another hidden feature, I had no idea. It has these hidden latches that you actually can swing them out to hook on a, a, a baby seat. Um, so I did have to remove these two inside nuts that are um, 16 millimeter and uh, there's actually only two here where the where the split is so that's the smaller side and the larger side of the seat and um, now what I think I have to do is uh, you if you have seats that fall down like these I don't I know not all CLKs have this feature but I think they don't but I think I have to remove this uh, plastic cover that's in the trunk uh, that's also a Torx uh, to gain access to whatever's under here because I think this Anchor has another uh, mounting point there. Also, um, by the way, the Torx uh, that you need to remove this screw that holds the anchor is a Torx 45. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove that plastic uh, panel in the trunk to see if there's any hidden bolts back there. Okay, so uh, I stand corrected. There's two more bolts under here. You fold the seats down and remove that, that plastic panel. And um, and it looks like the side here there's no there's no uh, bolt because there's actually a, a metal uh, pin or or stud whatever you want to call it, that just enters into a, a, a some sort of sleeve and that's same thing for that side so you just gotta disconnect the middle bracket so unfortunately even though it's only that window I gotta work on you gotta remove both seats or at least remove the anchor for both seats to gain access. All right, guys. So, um, like I suspected, it's. I thought it was a, a the dowel was coming out of the seat into the frame, but it's actually the other way around. The body, the dowel comes out of the body into the seat. Uh, so when you pull these out, just be careful because there's this vacuum line. And at first, I'm like, what's the vacuum line for? And then I remembered it's for the um, the switch that puts the headrest down when you back up. Uh, that's the button on the dashboard. <laughs> that guy so um, it's uh, operated by vacuum believe it or not so which a lot of old Mercedes everything is vacuum operated and then once you have access to that you will remove the little SRS cap from here so it looks just like that and you'll see there's a Torx bolt in there um, and also you remove this this bolster here so it's the same as that side next to the seatbelt 
and to remove this all you do is you pry it forward and you see there's a, a loop here that inserts into that plastic sleeve and on the bottom uh, you have to remove there's a little piece of leather here that just if you lift it up there's another metal bolt I'm sorry metal loop and that's secured with a 10 millimeter bolt that bolts onto the body so um, so this is fairly easy to come off and now the next step is to actually remove this bolt but now we're into airbag territory so uh, beyond this point you should disconnect your battery so your car is going to be immobilized uh, once you commit to go this far uh, until you get it all back in uh, place all right so now the time has come to remove this interior uh, panel um, again I removed the little airbag looks like that a uh, little button in there uh, to get access to that screw uh, I know I'm gonna have to remove the seatbelt extender so I'm just going to right now remove this card because I know this is just snapped on this little oval card here and uh, see what I need to do to get that uh, seatbelt extender out because obviously the seatbelt loops through there so I'm thinking there might be uh, an anchor I might have to remove that seatbelt anchor I have to check it out um, but let's go on and uh, do those uh, steps next All right, guys, I just want to walk you through the steps I just uh, did um, with the time lapse. So basically, first thing is I, I removed this little uh, metal plate that's held on with these tiny, two little tiny Phillips head screws. Um, that allowed me to pull back this, uh, this uh, weather strip here uh, because the, this pinches over the, uh, the door panel. Uh, the, then you have to remove a Torx screw that was behind that little uh, the SRS button is and once you remove that screw uh, this is a snap fit you can see it snaps vertically so you actually have to pull the panel up but it's locked on the bottom you can see this is the well, I call it a door card but the door panel this bottom section here does not need to come off and that will have this black bar I don't know if you see it here basically if you pull it forward it unlocks if you pull it back it locks so you basically have to pull this up it actually has a little hole here for you to put a, a, a pick tool and pull it forward and that will unlock the bottom edge of this door panel uh, that basically falls into this track and allows you to pull it up uh, now, I did disconnect the battery because when I peek through, I see there's an airbag right here and you don't want that going off. Uh, the other thing is you have to disconnect this uh, retractor arm and all you do is you, you pull it out and you stick a flathead screwdriver in this slot right here and it releases, disconnects from the metal, oh, actually this is actually plastic too, but disconnects from this plastic arm. Uh, so basically this is just a snap-on fit, but yeah, so you press in that little screwdriver in here and it squeezes this little tab in here and it allows you to pop that off so uh, the door card is removed but you, you got the seatbelt in the way so I'm gonna try to do this um, well actually take that back I, to get access to the door or to the window regulator you got to remove this retractor arm anyway and the seatbelt is anchored here so I think once I have this retractor arm removed I could just move this stuff out of the way without actually having to disconnect it all the way so that'll be the next step Okay, so I removed this uh, retractor arm assembly. Um, you're gonna have to, um, so it's held on with a couple of 10 millimeter uh, nuts, but you're gonna have this big bolt here that anchors the seat belt, and that is uh, a Torx. Um, Forty-five. So it's a big bolt that you got to remove from there, and 
then the uh, the seatbelt anchor that that's the Torx bolt right there the seatbelt anchor come off you could kind of move this panel out of the way now looking at this here's our airbag um, it looks like it's riveted in place and then it's mounted on a metal plate a stamped metal plate that's spot welded onto this whole metal inner assembly here this big stamp piece and it looks like it goes behind here and behind here so uh, I guess I have to remove this part of the trim and the lower panel here as well to gain access to this it's all it's a lot that's involved and you're basically dismantling the whole interior of this uh, panel it's a lot of work so uh, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start by removing this trim piece here I'm not exactly sure if that just snapped on. I do see that it tucks underneath this back card here. I'm hoping I could just wiggle it out and I don't have to mess with that back shelf. And this here, I think it just snaps on, but uh, there is a window switch here. So I'm gonna have to uh, uh, make sure I disconnect that. And also when I removed the retractor arm, I did have to unplug it. Don't forget about that. So uh, let's uh, keep going on our quest here. All right, guys, just want to let you know, so this, this big trim piece was getting hung up and I couldn't figure out what, what it was. It's basically this, this upper section here has these two um, tabs that insert into the panel and you can't, because the this, this panel rests on top of this window trim, you can't get it up and down. It, it's just impossible. So you have to uh, remove that little SRS cap again. There's a... A Torx bolt in there, a small one. Uh, that one was a T20, and and then you could just pop this off. It just everything's just snap fit, and then you could lift it out of the way to get the panel out. All right, now that we have full access to the door card here, I'm a little bit scratching my head because I don't see a freaking access panel for the life of me. There is a piece here, so I'm gonna try this back. Shine the flashlight in there. When I remove these rubber caps, that's actually the bolt connected to the glass itself. So I'm just gonna do an inspection of everything I can just to kind of figure out the next game plan. Because right now this is, I've removed everything and there's still no access to the window regulator. It's just everything's covered up. And in my head I'm like, it's almost like they designed this to never come off. Um, another weird thing is I, I discovered this bolt here. I didn't touch this bolt and it was half undone. So I'm wondering if that uh, holds the window regulator and somehow that undid itself over time with vibration and that's what made the window regulator fail or maybe popped out of place. So in any way, let me do a little investigation and on to the next steps. All right, so I got the window trim out. Uh, I would took a peek in here and, you know, I thought that this uh, was a motor that used cable operation for the uh, window regulator. And it turns out it's just an electric motor actuating on an arm. So the motor works fine, but you could just hear it clicking inside. So I think it's probably either a plastic gear or something like that that just got destroyed or worn out over time. So, uh, uh, by the way, to remove this trim piece, I just want to show you, it's a one piece. It wraps around the inside and the outside. Uh, so basically it's the inside trim, which basically it's just a uh, typical, you know, body sealer, uh, uh, rubber, uh, rubber uh, weather seal. And then the outside one is a two piece, is a plastic chrome trim. And then the rubber one. The rubber one has clips that snap onto the body uh, and also snap, have another return that snap onto the chrome trim. When I pulled it off, two stayed on the body, two stayed on the trim, but it doesn't matter. What you want to do is you want to pull from the this side first, and 
pop out all your trims and then the last one there you want to pull forward because it kind of uh, tucks under here a little bit so you can't lift it straight up you have to pull it out so uh, now we're gonna try to figure out how to remove this uh, regulator might have to remove the window with it I'm not exactly sure yet let's uh, try to figure this out okay so studied the situation here and basically there's this stamped metal bracket that has the motor connected to it and it also has the window itself bolted to it so the window is bolted uh, there's a bolt here uh, it's got a uh, plastic grommet to you know to protect the glass um, there is also one here which with the window up you can't get access to but I figured out that this sound sound deadening material here if you peel it back there is an access hole there so I'm just gonna do that slowly and I know there's an access hole because I can feel it from the inside here and then the third um, access hole is further down so I'm hoping there's an access panel down here as well so I'm just gonna peel back slowly this dead sound deadening without trying to break it and uh, I'm gonna remove the glass first because I think if I try to remove everything one piece, I don't think I'll be able to because the window is stuck in the up position. And also, uh, it might be too hard of a piece to handle. And then I have to disconnect the motor. I don't want to drop the glass, so I'm just going to disconnect the glass now. Okay, so we got the window out and now I got to try to figure out how to remove this metal stamping that holds the, the whole window regulator assembly. Looks like it's kind of a really weird fastener. It's like a, a Torx, but it's actually a stud. So I think you undo this and it the stud comes off of the interior panel. I'm not sure, but there's one here and one here. So I'm gonna undo those. There's gotta be a third one on the bottom somewhere. I can't find it yet. So I'm just gonna pull, remove these and then try to wo uh, wobble the panel and see where it's secured on the bottom. Alright guys, so I have uh, removed this top screw here, or nut I should say, and the one here. Um, so just ignore the whole Torx thing. I think that's to um, that's how they adjust the window in the factory. You don't want to touch that, you just want to remove the nut that's on there. Um, and uh, because this is on the window, this one was a little corroded. Uh, that one came out really easy, but this one I had to put some... Uh, a liquid wrench and let it soak a little bit and then it came out fine with a 13 millimeter uh, open wrench and now when I when I grab this panel and I wobble it I see there's one more attachment point and I could see um, see if I could show you guys right there that that stud right there you guys see it focus right there that stud uh, so to access that stud I was going crazy trying to fit my hands behind there and it's just impossible and what you got to do is you actually have to remove this uh, trim on the outside of the car and there should be a, a access to that bolt to undo it from this side so let's go ahead and do that step Okay, so this is the way this bracket sits in the car. This side faces the interior of the car. The motor is mounted on the exterior part of the panel. And basically what happened uh, to ours is this uh, Delrin or uh, some sort of plastic, I think it's Delrin piece right here that holds the cable assembly snapped. 
and allow the cable assembly to break loose. Uh, so what we're gonna have to do is remove this bracket so we can replace that component. We're gonna have to remove the motor. Uh, so that's a, um, a Torx 20 for the for this little assembly piece or, or uh, I guess this is really a union and then uh, 30 Torx for the motor. There's three of those. So we're gonna remove those and I want to show you this is a kit I bought on eBay. It costs $17 and it comes with a new um, pulley that I think is behind the motor. That's why we don't see it. It comes with a new piece to replace the one that's broken, uh, a conjunction, a union piece, and then a new cable and springs because the springs, um, the cables have springs on the end so that the uh, it cushions the uh, or absorbs any impact or shock so that it doesn't uh, uh, destroy the plastic parts quickly. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those parts and get these uh, on there. All right, so I just wanna take a couple of minutes to explain the situation here. So uh, this part of the, the wheel or the pulley that's fine it's not damaged really the damage was uh, this piece this is the new one the old one is in three pieces it completely broke this is uh, this is what it looks like now so um, what you got to do is you got to put this um, so the motors on this side just so you could get the orientation you got to put this on this way and this metal plate locks the locks the springs in there. So the cavities face up and this dip in the part faces away from the motor. So we're gonna mount this. Um, the cables, just grab the springs to show you. So right here. You gotta insert the spring into the cables. There's two of them. And then they go this way. And they kind of cross over each other. Just gotta press that in. Like that. That's one. And then the other cable. Same thing, feed the spring, and then pop it into the other section here. And again, they cross over each other. And this part will get bolted on this way. So cables need to go underneath these brackets, these loops. And then they just tie over this, these two uh, wheels here, these two pulleys. And then when you get to the point, uh, the kit came with a new wheel, so I'm just gonna use it. Uh, what you do is you, you're gonna put the, um, this, this track here for the travel of the window. You're gonna put your, your junction piece in the middle. Uh, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this little stopper into the pulley and you're gonna wind it halfway through. Oops. like three loops basically and then the other one is gonna go on the opposite side three loops as well so that way you're kind of halfway through the movement and when you put it into the motor you're gonna have uh, leeway both ways so I'm gonna put this assembly together and then once it's together I'm gonna show you how it moves
All right, guys, so it took a while for me to get this correct, and here's the trick, okay? The two cables are not the same size. One is longer than the other. Um, so because the motor is closer to that wheel than to that wheel, or whatever you want to call it, that means that this gets the shorter cable, that one gets the longer cable because it has longer ways to travel. Also, the when you position the ca uh, the cable, it's it's really hard, very difficult to get it right. What you got to do is you got to put the cable on this cam here, not on the actual outer wheel, but on the cam, on the short side. Same thing over here. What that does is allows you to have enough uh, slop on the cable that you could get the wheel in here and place correctly. Um, the cable that goes from this longer side or the farther away side winds on the bottom of the uh, so if this is this is positioned this way uh, on the on the assembly so that cable gets attached to the bottom side of the wheel and that cable gets attached to the top side I think the easiest way to do this and this is how I did it I moved it the, the this assembly all the way up to one side so I only had to wind one side of the assembly actually I did it this way I pushed this all the way there so that I did all of the winding on the bottom part of the wheel and then and then I just had to position it on this top clip and only do like half a turn for that one and again it's not the the tension is not so tight because you're only on the cam here you're not on the actual wheel once you put this back and that, what I did was I actually just plugged it in to test it once you move the engine, the motor back and forth, or the assembly back and forth, that cable will. This cam is designed so that the cable gets popped into the wheel, so it's like a one-way cam. So, finally got this on. One thing I gotta warn you is the kit I got. These cables were not the same size as the factory ones. So what I did is I ended up using the original older cables. Um, they were not really damaged and the springs I saw the quality of the springs on the factory uh, cables were a, a lot better than this so I kept the original cables uh, if you have an instance where your cables are actually cut or damaged uh, obviously then you, you might be you might need to get a new uh, use the cables that came with the kit but I didn't want to risk using something that wasn't designed to, to work with such a shorter cable one of them was almost like an inch shorter so what I'm thinking is maybe you just wind it up one less time on the wheel, but I didn't want to risk it, so I just used the, the original. Anyway, I'm gonna get just this back in the car and mount the window just to see if there's any special uh, tricks needed to get the wheel, uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, the window set up right. All right, guys, so uh, an extra set of uh, hands comes very useful when uh, putting this on. The reason is because you got to align it now. So there's three mounting uh, bolts, but you have to get the alignment just right or else your window won't close. You'll, you'll sense that something is impeding it, it'll drop back down. So it took a while of playing around. What I did was I got a piece of paper and um, just made sure. Oh, let me turn on the ignition here. All right, I just made sure that that piece of paper gets pinched at every section of the window. So that's nice and tight on all sides of the window or else when you're driving, you're gonna get like a whistling sound. It's gonna drive you nuts. So we got the window lined up, which was, well, actually other than getting access to this, it was one of the things I was worried about not being able to do right and having this window hit the top and drop down a couple of inches, which is like a safety mechanism they have. So uh, now it's just putting everything back the way it came out. So I'm not gonna waste your time 
in um, filming all of that because it's just a reverse order of me taking everything off um, if you have extra parts at the end that's a bad thing so make sure you put everything back that you took out and um, and I hope this video was helpful for you guys um, please don't forget to like and subscribe I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, see you next time